right. Um, so we'll be having Anita, um, that's our second keynote speaker, and she'll be talking about navigating the chaos community from beginner to pro. So if you're interested in the chaos community, uh, you want to understand how you need to start moving from exploring to actually contributing, you should pay attention to this session. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'll try to be as loud as possible. <laughs> yeah, my name is Anita, just like she said, Anita Ihuman, in case you're wondering how to pronounce the second name. <laughs> it's Ihuman. Yeah, and um, short story before I get into the section, I'll, I'll be speaking about chaos. And um, the first time I got to hear about the chaos community, I had a lot of questions. I was, I would go back to Google each word in the acronym and I'll come back and reach out to Ruth, and I'm like, I still don't understand. What, do this what does this community do? What are we trying to achieve? How do I come in? And um, after I ask Ruth, I'll go back to math, and I'm like, math, can you help me? I, want to com I really want to contribute, but I don't know where to come in, because this looks like an interesting community, but I'm having so much difficulty. And I think that's the story for every single person that joins the community. So today, I'll be speaking about how I got in, <laughs> and how you can also get involved as well. So um, a little bit about me, I am a, a developer advocate. I am also a technical writer. I'm contributing to quite a number of open source <laughs> communities, weird. But Chaos, um, Layer 5, the Good Dogs project are some of the few that I'm trying to champion currently. And um, I do love to speak about topics on open source documentation, cloud native stuff, and all of that. So yeah, that's just all about me. And so let's get into what I'm talking about today, which is chaos. What exactly is it? So chaos is an acronym, which, is, which stands for Community Health Analytics Open Source Software. Now, like I said, I always Google this like over and over, trying to make sure that it did make sense to me. And um, I'll come back again and say, what does community health, how does it al align with the open source? How do we come in? But basically, what Chaos does is um, we develop, we create metrics and analytics that are focused towards open source communities, um, health, and sustainability. And um, there's so many ways that we actually do this. Which is first, developing metrics, which is the major thing Chaos focuses on. Lots of metrics. If you join the Chaos community today, the first thing you might hear will be metrics. So yes, we develop metrics. And what are these metrics? Like standards that open source communities can use to you know, work on their own communities to attain that health and um, sustainability we're talking about. We also work towards um, leading programs and um, programs that also try to champion these metrics. We also um, develop methodologies that you can also use to implement some of these practices that we're working towards. And we have so many um, initiatives within the community that you could also get involved in as a contributor, as um, a partner, as an organization, whatever it is you want to come into the chaos community as. And then there are like so many things that we do in chaos community, aside talking about metrics. But the chaos focuses primarily on contributors. Why contributors? Because so many persons that are contributing want to feel welcomed within the communities that they're contributing to. And um, chaos metrics and standards are focused towards that. We focus on communities because we want to make sure that these communities are healthy for the contributors, and they also use some of what we're putting out to um, enable and improve on their communities. Then for companies, for um, people that are building companies and probably trying to set up companies, some of these metrics also come in handy for the um, setting up as well. And then for foundations, you want to donate to a particular project. You want to be sure that this project has meet the cultures that you your foundation works with and they both align before you can go on to do all of that. And so we exist for both contributors, communities, companies, foundations, and every single thing that talks about open source um, software development and health. 
and um, there's so many things that come together to achieve this. First, we talk about metrics. And so when we're talking about metrics, we have metrics around so many things. Metrics around um, governance and leadership, metrics around community health, metrics around life cycle, software events, diversity and inclusion, and um, so many other metrics. And there's still more to come, that's for sure. And then we also try to come together as a community, and we do that through our working groups. We have several working groups that um, are responsible for putting together these individual metrics. And we have the DEI working group that is responsible for the diversity, equity, and inclusion metrics. If you join that, there's so many other things that are happening within the working group, but I'll stop at that. Then there is the RICS working group that is responsible for developing metrics around RICS and compliance within open source um, communities and softwares. We have the evolution working group that's responsible for developing metrics around um, open source projects and software evolution, as well as community. We have the um, open source program office uh, metrics, OSPO, that also like tries to tackle our, um, areas around universities and communities and so many other things within open source program offices. Then the common metrics that try to tackle other areas within um, open source generally that metrics are co probably be um, directed towards and then metrics model working group where all of these metrics are discussed to fix together to make it beneficial to the users as well as the communities in the best ways possible. And then we also have, aside the metrics and the working group, we also have um, softwares that are developed under the Chaos community. Grimo Lab, one of the softwares is an open source project that is focused, that is focused on, that actually helps to curate, to analyze as well as visualize these um, metrics and data within your communities. And then Agor is um, a Python library that you can also use to collect some of these um, data around health and um, project growth generally. And then under the community initiatives, we have quite a lot. We have the badge, the DEI badge, diversity, equity, and inclusion badge, which um, covers two aspects: the events badge, where we develop, we use our metrics to try to help open source event organizers to um, measure as well as track their DEI efforts. And then after the review process is done, we recognize their efforts by issuing out badges. There are different badges. There's the gold, there's um, the bronze, there's um, silver. Yes, so that is for the event badging. And um, as an individual, you can also participate in reviewing. You can also bring up your event and apply as well. Then we have the project DEI badging, which is focused more on the community and project aspect, where we're trying to see that, okay, open source projects are actually as healthy and um, welcoming as they should be. And that is still in development, but yeah, we're trying to put that together as well. And then there are local chapters and communities, like the, the Chaos Asia and the um, Chaos Africa, which is responsible for this conference, thanks to Ruth, of course. And then this has so many things that are currently going on within the chaos communities, other than just talking about metrics. And um, so you might be wondering, how can I be actively involved with chaos? Well, there's so many ways. We just don't look out for people that probably know about metrics. You don't have to know what metrics are to actually actively participate in chaos. So you basically just need, did I swipe that? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you have design skills, you can definitely make um, great impact within the chaos community. And um, we heard one of the designers within the chaos talk earlier, but in a space of one year, I noticed that there has there's been like great contributions in terms of design from the community, and that is awesome. That's to show that a lot of persons are actually hearing the word and trying to find ways to get involved as well. Now you can also contribute in the development by building our web pages and so many other things. We have um, project badging which we are trying to put together the web page for. We have the Chaos um, 
uh, site itself that you can also help in develop developing. We have the softwares, Agro and Grimo Lab, that you can also participate in. And then on the documentation, we always try to do a documentation audit to make sure that our documentations are up to date, to make sure that everyone is participating at all times. Then we also, you can also participate by doing outreach. And this outreach can be in the form of speaking, telling people about projects, telling your conferences to apply for these badges because the essence of these badges is to get it out to the community. We want to make sure that these badges are helpful to the individuals within the community, not just having a badge and knowing that, okay, you have a badge, your community is actually making real efforts towards the DEI efforts um, or um, impact as well. Then you can contribute to the metrics and model development. There's so many things that go underneath that, but you can also get involved on our team to put together some of these metrics that we already have or also improve on it. We have the website management, which is another way that you can also get your hands dirty within the community. Event management, just like this one we have here. So many persons came together to make this a success and um, thumbs up to every single person involved. Then the DEI event badging review, where you can actually review projects that want to get badges. So you can also be a part of that team if, so, if it is something that interests you. Then the social media and communications, where we talk about our social media handles, making sure that the word on chaos gets out there to every other person. We also have newsletters that you can get involved in. You can create content in form of writing and all of that. And then, where do I start? I think this is a question that every single person asks after finding out what chaos does. But there's so many ways you can get started. The first is um, the Slack community. So join our community channels. Now you can join the Slack where you get to see different channels that you can ask questions immediately. You can ask questions to one-on-one one -on -one persons. You can ask questions in the general channel, whichever way we do not mind. Your questions will definitely get answers in one way or another. You can join our discourse channel where you can also ask questions or start conversations and have people engage in, the in your chat as well. Then join our working groups. Now the only way to actually know what is going on in a particular space is by being involved in that space. So let's say you have interest in the DEI working group. You can't contribute from afar except you're within that particular working group or you're invested in that working group. So you have to actually join these working groups based on your interest, of course. And then you can follow up with our community meetings. We have um, a calendar where you can add yourself to and get notified whenever the meetings come up. It will be a great reminder because a lot of times we tend to forget when meetings are going on, especially when we're carried away with our phones and all of that. But adding this to your calendar will give you a quick reminder whenever a meeting comes up so you don't miss out on any. You can also get notified on impromptu events. Let's say we're having workshops and all of that. You get to catch up on all of that as well. And then, if you need any help, after joining the community and you're not sure that you've received enough help or enough information to get on board, you can also ask for help. And you can do that with our quick start guide. It's available on our website. You can also check that. You can also reach, um, join the newcomers weekly um, hangouts, which we try to have every week. Basically, what we do there is discuss with our newcomers areas of interest, how they can um, dive into the community, point them to persons that can be like a tour guide and um, other resources that they find really, really helpful. So it's really easy to get into the chaos community at the moment. You can also check our community handbook that breaks down everything I just said here in the most exemplary way and easy to understand as possible. Then reach out to a tour guide. So you can get that th through our newcomers weekly but you can also check the um, Slack channel so that we refer you to a tour guide that can point you to areas that you need help in. And then our community channels, that is the last place you can also ask for help. So don't forget, asking questions and asking for help is perfectly okay. Every single person did ask questions. Now let me tell you what would possibly happen if you um, didn't know that you can actually ask for help. 
in my experience, I joined Chaos for like sometime 2021, and I didn't make any contributions for the first three to four months. I would just join the meetings and jump off because first, I didn't know what they were talking about. Second, I didn't know anybody that I could better ask questions from. And that led me like just joining the community. And I felt like I was wasting a lot of time because I wasn't making impact within that four months period. But I think this can be a different thing for you if you actually just go through these quick steps that we pointed out here and asking the relevant questions as, um, as much as possible. So yes, that is all that I have. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Yes. So I have two questions. The first one is, and this is kind of general, but so say you have someone who wants to get involved and contribute to the project, but what they want to do is something that the project is, there's not maybe a lot of mentors for, or it's a new thing that's not really happening in the project. What advice would you give for helping someone who's really excited and enthusiastic to contribute, but maybe redirect them to something where they can connect with other people or a mentor? How do you guide someone who maybe wants to do something that just is not available in a, in a project or any community? Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, I think that is completely um, easy to get on because our communities, once you join our communities, we give you the opportunity to bring up your ideas in any way that we can improve on our efforts or even any ways that we can better work towards making the community active. And I'll just give you a quick instance. The last, um, the project I'm currently working on, a DEI research, it was just an existing issue that no one actually was working on. But then I indicated interest and I brought ways we can work towards it. And um, I'm currently working on the research right now. So with the help of the community, I was able to ask questions during the meetings follow up after the meetings, and um, I, was got, I was given the directions on where to go about. Second question, please. This one's just fun. What's your personal favorite part of chaos, or what do you enjoy doing the most? I think my favorite part of chaos is knowing that what, no matter how little the idea is, it makes sense. No matter how little the idea seems to you, it will make sense to the community, because so long as it is helping or solving a problem to some of the um, challenges around community health, definitely it makes sense and we try as much as possible to bring that idea to life. So like that's my biggest and exciting part of chaos because most times I think of things and I'm like, no, it won't make sense. It, does, it doesn't make sense because it doesn't make sense to me. But when I uh, suggest it, someone says, that's a great idea. We can actually work towards it. And I get more suggestions on how we can refine that particular idea and make it an actual thing. And it does make me feel good. I need to ask a question. OK. Okay, so I don't know if my question will make sense. <laughs> okay, so do I necessarily need to have like um, a background in tech? Because I do alternative medicine, something completely different from maybe what everybody's doing here. So do I need, because I would really, really like to join the community. I'm looking toward transitioning into something completely different from what I am, what I used to know. So I don't know, do I need a background knowledge in tech or can I just? All right, um, that's a great question, by the way. I don't think you need a background in tech to contribute, because most of the things that we try to achieve in chaos are not solely focused on the software or the technical aspect. If you take a look, we have like one-on-one -on -one meetings where we discuss things, and sometimes you'll be in the community, you might not need to write code throughout your stay. There's so many persons that are making great impact around research, there are um, university lecturers on our team. They're different individuals from different backgrounds. 
and one way or another they find ways to fit in their skill set so you don't necessarily need that technical expertise to get involved in the chaos community So this is the last question will be taken, people. All right. My question is very simple. I just want to know um, if there's like a podcast channel or some medium articles regarding chaos. Yes, we actually have um, a podcast channel, Chaos Cast where we discuss about things within the community and things outside the community around um, general open source community health and s software health as well. So you can follow up on our um, podcast, the Chaos Cast. If you try to Google it, you might get a pop-up on that. And you can also subscribe to the newsletters so you get um, updates on what is going on. And other than that, you can check the, the social media handles. We try to post our week um, our weekly meetings updates, so you can also join the meetings through the social media handles as well. Our YouTube channel also like gives you an idea of areas like getting started, some of our conferences, down to our weekly meeting recordings that you can also catch up on. Just you know, give your, yourself an idea of where to come in.